Howdy folks, and welcome back to my Metal Gear Solid The Phantom Pain channel, and today we're going to talk a little bit about forward operating base defense. And specifically, I want to talk about placing cameras and placing mines. So if you haven't had the opportunity to do this yet, when you go into selecting your security devices, there's new options that uh, form up after you get further far enough down the tech chain. And if you've been chasing down the surveillance cam tech chain, uh, you can find eventually this guy, cam marking device. I highly recommend grabbing this, and I also highly recommend grabbing the D-Mine marker as well. Uh, both of which allow you to choose unique locations to put camera devices and mines. And the farther up you go on the, the tech chain for that, the more of which you can place. So right now I'm able to place one, but after I can you know, get all the way through it, I'll be able to place up to three cameras in surprising locations. And I did choose the, uh, the gun cameras. Um, <clears throat> I, I choose the lethal options on my FOBs, hit or miss, uh, that's what I like to do, uh, and then the mines, the same idea, okay, I, I go for the lethal ones, and at the full highest rank available for this, I'll be able to place 12 unique mines in my base. Now, why is this important? Well, the biggest reason is because FOBs and the settings that you use to defend them are standardized across all players, you know, forward operating bases. Therefore, an attacker who's really dedicated at the art of attacking a base already knows where all the cameras are already set up. They already know <clears throat> where all the mines are set up. They know the troop movements, and they are used to going into FOBs and skirting around them. So the cool thing about this is, this way, you can choose creatively where you'd like to lay out a few surprises for the guy who's trying to invade your base. I'm not going to say it's a game changer, I'm not going to say that somehow this is what's going to turn the tides and make it so your FOB is never successfully attacked again, but what I can say is that you can at least throw a few curveballs, and if you're an active defender, it may buy you a few extra seconds and a little bit of time uh, to you know stop your attacker and give you a chance to you know counter, or if you're not online at all and there's nobody defending your base, at the very least, you get to make this guy's life a little bit more difficult. All right, so next I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and pause. I'm going to go into my security settings, and I'll show you how to actually get into the mode to place these. Okay, and now that I'm in my security settings area, you can see that I have my list of platforms for my two FOBs. All right, and you can also see where the last invaders have invaded my FOB by looking at the log. This is a great roadmap to look at, guys. It's kind of painful to see how people got in and what they took, but on the same note, it'll tell you what path they took, and that'll give you some ideas of what you may want to do when you're placing some mines and placing some cameras. Let me show you. Uh, first up, I'm going to select the command platform, and now you'll notice because I've learned on the tech chain the placeable mines and the placeable cameras, there's this new option, camera mine free placement settings. So you don't go to your FOB through the training menu, you go through it, uh, you go to your FOB through here to place those mines. And it'll give you some special options in your equipment that way. Okay folks, so here I am on my uh, first platform of my command area of my base, okay? And I warped in at the same spot that one of my previous attackers warped into. All right. Now there's three different starting areas on any starting platform, but uniquely they're designed exactly the same. So, you know, the three different areas, one here, there's one up here by a pipe, okay, and then there's one on the other side on kind of like a lowered platform. Now, one of the things I want to mention is that my first thought when I had the ability to set mines and markers, and by the way, here's how you do it. If you hold down on your D-pad, you'll be able to select... Uh, you know, just like you were selecting your pistol, you can select the camera marking device, which will let you set your camera. And if you go into the support tools menu, you can select a mine just like you would set down a mine. And you do have a counter there where it says mines placed and cameras placed to let you know how many left you have. If you do go over four, then it'll take the first mine you placed away uh, to place out your next mine. And so you kind of work through them that way. Now, my first thought was to go ahead and set a mine right here on the starting wormhole. Unfortunately, if you do that, there is a few seconds of invincibility that your opponent will have that that won't affect them. So even though it would be right in the kill zone, when they teleport in from a wormhole, that won't work. So I just want to let you guys know that one ahead of time. Uh, it's a real bummer. Uh, I thought that would be a great way to just kind of get things off with a bang. But one of the things I've noticed from watching a lot of people's FOB videos of when they invade a base is a lot of times the first thing they do is they run to the steps ahead of them and that's the way they start their invasion. So actually the first mine I placed is actually right here. 
It's just along the edge of this wall. For the invader who's coming in right away, that's not necessarily the easiest thing to spot. And I try to put it just a little outside the sight line. That way when they make that opening sprint, bam, it hits them right in the feet. Okay? That's one tactic you can use is to just go ahead and put something a little outside of the sight line of the starting area. Now there's only three places you can really bank <clears throat> on your opponent having to go. And I'll show you here on the map. The first one is one of the three starting locations. Okay, so think uh, start, the starting area. The second place they have to go is across these bridges. So think choke points. The, they have to cross that bridge one way or another, and there's a few of those bridges to cross. <clears throat> The last place they have to go for a successful defense is the exit door. All right, so those are, you know, they can maneuver anywhere they want to on these platforms and skirt around a lot of your security. But at some point, they have to come into your base. They have to cross a bridge, you know, any one of these three bridges at these choke points. All right, and they have to try to get to your exit in order to be successful. So here's the strategies I want to share with you guys. First up. Uh, I want you guys to think about being clever uh, and again you can do this however you want but just keep those things in your mind it's better to put a placed uh, security device to deter them or slow them down in a place you know they will have to go than just picking someplace arbitrarily sure I could put a mine up where this guy is standing but is that really where an attacker is gonna go Probably not. What you see a lot of times in these videos is that the guys have the patrol movements down, they'll skirt around the edge of a platform, and then they'll come down to about here, they'll put their gun out, and then they'll just roll across this bridge. They'll turn their camera angle around, and they'll just do a low roll over here to skirt around those UAVs that are coming up. So one of the first places I thought of putting a camera is actually right here. And you can see that it goes on any flat surface, but it also can go on some of these trickier surfaces, like this. Okay, now even, uh, by the way guys, mines, you can't put any mines across this line. That's the last place you can put mines. It's one of the other things I thought of, guys, when I was thinking of choke points. So I can't place them on those stairs right here, and I can't put them on the lower level platform. But, <clears throat> I can put them anywhere be behind this line. So yeah, so this camera, one of the first things I thought of is, since a lot of players like to roll across this platform, that's not a bad idea for a camera to be there. Can an attacker spot it? Yes. Can they shoot it down? Probably. Will it slow them down? Maybe. Okay? And right now, that is one of the keys that I'm trying to put in there, is that they're not expecting to see it there. If they see it, they might take it out. But if they don't see it, it may buy my defenders a little bit of an extra... Uh, few seconds to uh, go ahead and launch an offense. All right, another place to think about putting that, uh, I put that one right there at the first choke point, but honestly a better spot for it may be your third bridge. <clears throat> when somebody attacks your base, if a defender comes to arrive to uh, protect it, then the attacker immediately gets reset no matter what platform they're on, onto this third bridge right here, okay? So actually having a camera right here is not a bad idea as well because if a defender does come in to defend that base then your attacker has to do this bridge over again and if this camera's there well it might buy you a few seconds or you know a little bit of uh, pain and punishment time on the guys attacking your base now the last place I'm going to talk about today is the the uh, exit door and this is one of the other few places that you can bank on your attacker is gonna have to go at some point now if uh, if you're defending your base and you actively have a guy trying to invade your base, one of the strategies you can do is to bring in mines with you as you come on in and just mine the living <laughs> snot out of this place. Uh, you can place up to about eight mines uh, on an FOB defense, okay, on top of uh, the base's standard security settings. And if you know they're going to go to that final door, that's a great place for you know sleep mines to try to trap them and try to catch up with them. This mine here is standard that comes with the door. <clears throat> One of the things I like doing is actually placing another mine right about here where they're not expecting it, okay? Uh, and that way, as they come around this corner, even if they get that one, they usually get taken out by number two, okay? I also have one right here, okay, by the door. If they're in a rush, sometimes can catch them. If they try to come around from the other side, I've also put a surprise one right here. Now, I've looked on my FOB defenses, and I have seen that those mines worked. 
uh, when I wasn't online to defend my base, I've actually gone back through the log and it will say, you, have to, you know, attacker tripped mine or detonated mine. So I do know that these surprise mines that they weren't expecting did hit my attacker. Did it stop them? No. Was there a defender on the base to stop that person? No. Uh, did it probably aggravate them and slow them down? Yes. <laughs> did I like the sound of that? Absolutely I did. All right, so let's recap really quick. First off, to, to get into this menu, you don't go through your FOB training mission. Uh, there's nothing selectable there. You go through the security settings for your individual platforms, and you'll select free camera and mine placing. Uh, you'll go to your base, and then you'll have the option to select in your weapon items the camera marker and the mines. All right, You have uh, the counter up there in the upper right-hand part of the screen to let you know how many you've placed, and you can see them on your map denoted by the square for the gun camera and the red for the mine markers. So you can kind of keep track platform to platform on where you've put them. Also, too, when you have an invader come into your base, you can see whether that was tripped, and that was the mine that caught them, which is kind of nice. All right. And last but not least, the strategies we talked about today are thinking about the three places you know your attacker has to be. One is their starting position, two is the choke points at every bridge, and then three is the final door okay now one other thing I wanted to mention about that gun camera I placed you know you could easily put that on the lower level as well if you think your invaders like to go through the lower level I would say for most of the 10 minute speed runs I've seen people just go on the top part of the bridge which is why I placed it there but if you want to you can try something even sneakier and try placing it right here on the inside of this door that is actually a legit surface that will hold a camera but uh, from what I've seen from when I've trained in my base is it's not fast enough to pick up the attackers that comes in unless it's pointed directly out and even then once the attacker crosses this line this threshold you know that it counts as a base win and that camera wouldn't do anything so uh, that was one of the sneaky things I thought of the first time uh, I had this avail ability available to me and I'll just let you know guys right now it's a good idea but it just doesn't work in practice, unfortunately. Uh, that's why I picked the camera at the choke points instead. Or if you also want to think of a neat place to put a choke or a camera, this actually is one of my other favorite spots, is right here. You can actually place a camera right there on one of these poles. Any flat surface, guys. So you can think very creatively about where you want these things to go that could surprise an attacker. Also, you can work on these uh, slightly different angles, okay? You can see how that'll actually go there. Uh, there's also, <clears throat> you know, peripherals. You know, be creative. But I like to think of putting any sort of security device in a place where I know they have to go. Uh, that camera is actually not a bad one. They they don't expect it, and it covers the two uh, ramps up that you have to take to get to this final door. Okay. So anyway, I hope this uh, tips helped you guys. Uh, this video went a little longer than I expected, but if you did like it, like it, subscribe to my channel. I'll keep trying to put out more advice like this out there. There wasn't a whole lot of information about camera placing and mind setting, so I hope this helped you guys out to figure out <clears throat> how you get into that menu and maybe some tips, some tri tips and tricks on where to place them. <clears throat> hope you guys had a great time, and I'll see you next time.